Grayson and we're glad that I would like to welcome you to First Reformed United Church of Christ in the city of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where we are open and affirming church, meaning whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome and you are loved here at First Reformed Church. Do we have any announcements this morning?
Beautiful job, John Carl. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found with blind, but now I see through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I'm like, Pastor, why would you read it now? I'm giving them time to get back to the choir now. There you go. There's everybody. All right. If you're able to, please stand for our call to worship. Let's sing to God. God is here. Let's sing of love. For love is here. Let's sing and rejoice. For here our souls are restored. Our opening hymn on this third Sunday of Lent is O Come to Me, You Weary, and it's found on page 484. of grace. Reveal yourself the power of your love. Flow over us 
the presence of your Holy Spirit. Help us know the glory of your love and experience the wonder of your grace. The Bible reminds us that the God we serve is faithful and merciful to forgive us of our sins. FRC, let us say our confession together. Faithful one, we long to trust your steadfast faithfulness. We yearn to know your life-giving love. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. before Lynn is over, I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing it. Larry told me we're going to sing it the next time. I'll have it down pat. All right? Hear now the words of assurance. Christ, the living water, is here, washing over us with mercy and filling us with hope and renewal. Rejoice and be glad, for we are renewed with love and made whole with grace.
We'd like to say good morning and happy Sunday to all of our family and friends that are watching online. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. So glad that you were able to join us for worship on today. Do we have any visitors visiting with FRC? If so, could you just wave at us so that we could see you? I see a hand. I see, a, I see some hands. I see some hands. Would you do me a favor, FRC? Would you stretch your hand towards our visitors? Repeat after me. Say, we're so glad you came. Please come again. God loves you. And we do too. Here's a portion of our service we all can participate in. And it's the passing of the peace. And depending upon how comfortable you are, you can embrace the person near you. Or you can put your hand over your heart and say, peace be with you. You can tap fists, toes, or elbows. But whatever you do, you have to pass the peace. All right? So let us offer one another strength and encouragement as we pass the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. FRC, let us share the peace of Christ. Good morning. Our first reading is from the Old Testament book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do for this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah 
and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Our second reading is from the book of Psalms, the 95th Psalm. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massah in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For 40 years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Our gospel reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we are, sorry, our New Testament reading, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, therefore, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the, de from the wrath of God? We will, be, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Seal my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Gracious God, we thank you that it is in you we live, move, and have our being. Holy Spirit, I pray even now that you would think through my mind and speak through my lips. None of me and all of you. Thank you, God, now that our eyes are anointed to see, our ears are anointed to hear, and our hearts are anointed to understand. And we thank you, God, that our lives will be made the better as a result of the word we hear today. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. As God should guide in the time that I have to share, I want to put a tag on the verses that Dean Lovelace read this morning, and I want to preach from the subject, Are We There Yet? I said I want to put a tag on those verses, and I want to preach from the subject, Are We There Yet? I can recall growing up being a young a uh, lad about nine or ten years old, and every summer my aunt and uncle would take me to King's Dominion. I would love, I would get up early in the morning with anticipation because I knew we were going to some place that I enjoyed going year after year. I would jump in the back seat of the car and we would ride down 95 South, leaving from DC, going to Doswell, Virginia. And while we were riding, every so often I would say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I would keep asking it and my aunt and uncle would ignore me. We would continue down 95 and I would ask it again. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And they still will ignore me. Well, about the third time I said, are we there yet? Are we there yet? My uncle turned around and said, boy, close your mouth. That's not what he actually said, but because we're in church, I'm going to keep it like that. But if you had a father, if you had a father or an uncle like I did, you can interpret what he turned around and said to me. So I was in the back seat. I'm crying. I'm all upset. He said, I said, be quiet. I said, be quiet. And we kept going. And lo and behold, before I knew it, we arrived at King's Dominion. It was always a journey. It was always a time of us going from D.C. to there. So often I'm drawn to Paul's letters because Paul in Romans shows us how to live together and also how to live out the gospel. We see them debate over things of what certain foods that they should eat. We see them debate over who could speak and who could not speak in church. We see them debate over who should marry or who should not be married. We see disagreements about the Sabbath. The letter also, according to a theologian, Hogan, at Wesley Theological Seminary, says that these letters, these Pauline letters, reveal a man who rejoices in all God has done for him and everyone else, Jew and Gentile, but at the same time, he writes openly of his failures to live up to God's expectation. Let me say it again. She said that it reveals a man. It reveals someone who rejoices and God has done something for him and everyone else, but at the same time, they write openly about their failure to live up to God's expectation. Uh, these Pauline letters are to the churches that were founded by Paul. He wrote these letters, Joanne, to encourage the people that the steadfastness of God and encouragement may they grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of your Lord Jesus Christ. That's in Romans 15, 5 and 6. And that's what our Lenten journey FRC is all about. This Lenten journey, these appointments that we've been making with God is all about us getting to know God 
and getting to know ourselves. Oh yes, that's what it's all about. It is about you, Teresa, getting to know God and getting to know yourself. And Paul tells us, David, that we have a God who loves us. A God that loves us when we were weak. A God that loved us when we were enemies of God. A God that loved us when we were enemies with each other. A God that loved us so much that God sent God's son. But can I take it a step further? It's not just a God that loves us when we were weak. It's a God that loves us when we are weak. It is a God that loves us when we are enemies of each other. It is a God that loves us even when we make mistakes. It is a God that loves us even when we are sinners. It is a God that loves us even when we were enemies of God. It is a God that loves us. And I don't care who told you otherwise, whether it was your parent, whether it was the principal, whether it was society, whether it was your, your family, God loves you. Write it on a bulletin. Get a tattoo and put it on your arm, but remind yourself God loves you. That's right, you may not love me. You may not like me. You may not, but God loves me. As a matter of fact, why don't you put your arms around yourself right now and hug yourself and tell yourself God loves me. Let me hear you say God loves me. God loves me. The awesome thing about it is that God loves you even when you're good and when you're bad. God loves you even when you're doing the straight and narrow and you're not. God loves us. It is a God, Noreen, that searches high and low. It is a God that runs out to meet the prodigal. It is a God who forgives 70 times, 70 times, seven times. And if I was to interpret that in contemporary language, today. It is a God who forgives a gazillion, bazillion, bazillion, a trillion times. It is a God who forgives. Paul reminds us that we are not able to work hard to justify ourselves or to bring reconciliation with God, that it only happens through God's love and God's grace. This passage teaches you and I and shows us this guy, Paul, who thought he had peace with God, though he was reconciled. He had studied and lived the Torah, Dean Lovelace. He had been an important religious leader. He picked up his cross to follow Jesus to live a life of love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And beloved, that's what I came to encourage you on this morning, on this third Sunday of Lent, that God is calling for us too to pick up our cross. What is our cross? I'm glad you asked. Our cross is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Why don't you just look down your row at somebody and say, I love you. Oh, you said it like you were scared. Look down the row at somebody else, somebody else, and say, I love you. Somebody didn't look at somebody. Y'all scared to say it. Say it one more time. Look at them and say, I love you. I love you. Yes, God, that's what he's calling us to do, to live a life of love, a life of forgiveness, and a life of reconciliation. But sometimes... While we are on this journey, and while we keep asking, are we there yet? While we are on this journey, we will have to experience some afflictions. I wish I could tell you that it would be affliction free. I wish I could tell you that I had a get out of affliction card for you. I wish I could tell you the prayer or some little thing that you could chant or say that would keep affliction out of your mailbox. But unfortunately, regardless, of who you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you will deal with afflictions. You will have to deal with some type of test or trial. And what Paul shows you and I, it is that through that affliction, Paul grew closer to Jesus and closer to God. It was through that affliction that Paul got endurance. It was through that affliction that Paul's character was built. It was through that affliction that Paul 
Paul now had hope. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying you have to be afflicted to go through. I'm not saying that you have to suffer. But what I am saying is that God helps us while we are going through our afflictions while we are going through our times. And if we were to be honest in here, everyone under the sound of my voice has experienced some type of affliction, whether it was an affliction in your mind or an affliction in your family or an affliction in your finances or your church. We all have experienced some type of affliction. Paul does not say that God sends the suffering. Paul does not say that the, that the affliction or suffering produces character that you have to endure without protest. No, 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 no. Paul does not say that at all. In quoting the words of Dr. King, a riot, a protest is the language of the unheard. What is it? America has failed to hear. Ah, that's what it is that even in the midst of afflictions, I can still rise up and be a voice for the voiceless. As I'm boring you, let me take and get to my, my, my three points and get out of your way while we are on the road to peace. While we are on the journey of getting to know God and getting to know ourselves, we will run into three things. The first thing is this, we will run into detours. Let the church say detours. Detours, detours, while we are on this journey, we will run into detours. On Wednesday, I was on Ross Street visiting some of our members, and I had to leave from Ross Street to get to Jane Street for a meeting with my academic advisor. I left Ross Street, which is only a five, not even a five minute drive to get over to the seminary. But when I tried to go down Duke Street, there was a detour. I said, okay. So I tried to go down another street, go up. It was another detour. And eventually I had to go all the way down to Lyme, all the way up Lyme and back around and go through Liberty. Is that Liberty Place or Liberty Street? Yes? No? Y'all know where? To? Okay, thank you, Sandy. Somebody. All right. And I went down and finally got there. And when I got in, I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. She said, I'm just glad you're here. And that's how you got to be. The detours are going to come. The detours are going to come on your job. The detours are going to come in your family. The detours are going to come in our church. But we have to stay on the journey and don't allow it to stop us. But not only will there be detours, but there will also be distractions. Let the church say distractions. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. There will be distractions. There will be things that will try to take your attention away from you getting closer to God and closer to knowing yourself. And my encouragement to you while you're on this Lenten journey is to not get distracted. It's easy to get distracted by what somebody says. It's easy to get distracted by what somebody does. But keep your eyes focused on God and focus on getting to know yourself. But finally, not only are there detours and there are distractions, but the last thing is, is that there's doubt. Doubt. Doubt will come on the journey and say, I don't need to keep going, I could stop here. Doubt would come on the journey and say, I, 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 I've done enough, I've gone further enough, I, I, can, I, can, I can give up here. Doubt says, well, 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 she stopped, maybe I should stop too. Don't allow the detours, distractions, or doubt to stop you on your journey. Instead, here's the last D, be determined to not stop until you reach that place of peace. Be determined to not stop until you reach that place of wholeness with God. Be determined to not stop until you are at that place of peace with yourself. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. And my uncle turned around and said, boy, be quiet. And I kept crying and huffing and puffing. And my aunt looked back at me. She said, not yet, but almost. Not yet, but almost. 
We're not the church yet where we need to be for the sake. Not yet, but almost. I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm not going to cross every T and dot every I. I'm going to get there just not yet, but almost. While we are on this journey together, FRC, don't let the detours, don't let the distractions, and don't let the doubt keep you from being determined to run your race. Thank you, God, for having your own way in our lives. Amen. send flowers to the crafts children and cards to our homebound members that's what church is all about it's about us being the church us being the church any other joys and concerns yes ma'am i'd like to ask for prayer for a friend of mine her name's sandy she's been on quite a journey she went through great chemotherapy and surgery and tomorrow they're going to start the radiation treatment and it's been quite a journey for mm. her Yes, ma'am. Any other joys and concerns? And once, once, twice a year, we bless uh, prayer shawls that our members have made. And okay. I was just going to say it's our joy. Oh, you can say it better than me. Go ahead. Uh, it's our joy to present uh, prayer shawls today that will be blessed. I just wanted to make it clear to everybody that this is not just a pastoral thing. Anybody in the congregation who knows somebody who needs support um, may take a prayer shawl, just sign it out at the Baron Dana's office and put the person's name so that we're sure that the same person doesn't get more than one. And also I want to give credit to Carolyn Dingman who was a former member who contributed three of the prayer shawls 
and said she hopes that we'll make good use of them. And also, we are now down to, because of death, attrition, um, disability, change of residence, uh, only two of us, so we can hardly be called a group anymore. So if anybody knits and wants to be part of the group, let us, or group, let us know. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Can we thank Mason for making these? Any other joys and concerns? God, we thank you that you reminded us today that even while we're in our afflictions, we're not in our afflictions by ourselves. God, we're on this journey to peace. We're on this journey of getting to know you and getting to know ourselves. God, we pray that while we're on this journey and distractions and detours and doubts would come, help us to be determined determined to go through, determined to be all that you've called us to be, determined, oh God, to do justice, determined to love mercy, determined to walk humbly. God, someone needs your touch of healing today. Someone needs your touch of deliverance. God, I pray that you touch Deb and Darlene and Ron and Joanne and Kathy and Pat and Sue, Kay and Ron and Janet and Janine and Paula and Kathy and Ed, and Bruce, and Alta, and Don, and Richard, and Brian, Diane, Pedro, and Los, touching Abby Schultz, and Sean, and Jackie, and Terry, and Paul, and Sabina, and Pam, and Carleen, touching Mary Ann Rimley, touching Rick Winehole, touching God, Frank, and Shara, God, touching Glennis, and Jimmy Steyer, touching Donna, and Sandy, God, we thank you for touching the people of Ukraine, and Russia, and Armenia, and while you're touching those countries, touch our country, touch our city, touch our community, and we pray the way you taught your disciples to pray, in saying, our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And God, I thank you for blessing these prayer shawls that every household, every person that they come in contact with would feel your loving touch, feel your loving peace, feel your loving joy. We thank you, and I pray that those that made it, that you would bless them for their gift. In Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for our tithes and offerings.
giver. We thank you, God, that these gifts will be used to the upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you for returning it, not 30, not 60, but 100-fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is, O Savior, Let Me Walk With You, and it's found on page 503. we are called, go in the fellowship of Jesus Christ who claims us as siblings, go in the community of the Holy Spirit who binds us together with all the saints, FRC this week, go with grace to shine God's love into all the world, amen. Have a blessed week.